What is up hobby friends and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Rhino from Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've got the paints and colors I've used up on the screen. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, note those down, and then we can dive right on into the video. So just a bit of overview on the prep of the miniature. Rhino falls very much in line with some of the larger, more, I will, I'll call it dynamically posed models. You're looking at like Hulk and Venom. And what you're gonna find when you're building this model is a lot of the limbs, in particular the arms and the torso, come in halves. What that means is you're gonna have mold lines and gaps that run along very prominent parts of the model. They've done a fairly decent job hiding some of it in seams where muscles meet, but in some other areas, you're gonna find that you actually need to go back in, um, especially where the um, legs meet the body, forearms meet upper arms, sides and around the head. You wanna go in with some sort of gap filler. I used Milliput and some gloss varnish just to fill those in. Voleo Putty works very well, green stuff, brown stuff, whatever you are fancy. You can also see that I've subassembled them. I've kept Rhino separate from the base. This will allow for easy painting on both the underside of the base where he's largely covering it with the model on top it becomes very difficult to reach a lot of these corners and crevices and then as well under rhino it's a lot easier to paint the underside rather than trying to have to angle up and through the base it'll also make it easier hopefully for me to record this tutorial and then finally for the prep on the base you can see that i've done a lot of extra detail work to make the base feel a little more dynamic and visually interesting so what I did was I started off with some rebar. This was pulled from the Spider-Man Rivals kit. Then I used a 3D printed fire hydrant, although I believe you can pull one. Um, I believe the Sanctum Sanctorum, I think has a fire hydrant. I, I might be mistaken, it might be the apartment, but you can use um, a stock kit if you have one. Um, I have a 3D printer, fairly easy for me to make more of these. And using some plastic card tubing, I connected it to the base rubble, added a bit more there. So it's sort of like he's blowing through a bit of a debris and it's a very easy way to add a bit more motion. You can see with the way that it pulls out, it sort of reinforces this, this curve or this line or this punch that Rhino has, he's punching into the ground and the fire hybrid motion reinforces that. I then went in with some milliput. I stamped basically brickwork and then cut it apart and just glued it all over the base to help add a bit more variety to the scale of the texturing. One of the faults I have with these tactical rocks is they're fairly simplistic. The scale is very uniform. And to help sell a convincing model at the scale, you wanna have a variety of textures down to the very fine details. So this brickwork of the smallest scale helps do that. We also used some cups and crushed cans and bottles from the base sets. And then finally, we hid all of the gaps and added a bit more of that finer debris with some ground texture paste from AK. The exact color doesn't matter. You just want a fine texture and this will help to blend it all together. And again, variety of texture. Once we're finished the model, everything's painted, I'll go back in with some newspapers and magazines and just add a little, little final touch to the base probably around the sidewalk, have it overlapping a bit, and then maybe have another piece flying off of the rubble. I'm gonna start with a few airbrush base coats on this model. With ash gray, I'm gonna apply an even base coat over the entire surface. And I'll follow this up with a xenophil highlight of graphite. For this, I'll be spraying from the direction of my light source. And the goal here is to capture the highlights on the raised portions of the model and leaving the deepest recesses or shadows in that ash gray. From there, I'll start painting in the texture of the suit with some medium sea gray. This is probably the most tedious part of the model. Because of the sculpted texture on the suit, it's a balance of actually following along with the way that the model is sculpted, along with freehanding texture on the more flatter, less sculpturally detailed parts of the model, while also simultaneously balancing, capturing the form or the volume of the muscles. I made sure to really exaggerate some of the highlights, especially at this stage, where a lot of those muscle forms overlap, intersect, and insert into each other. The goal here is, is to make sure that 
you are clearly showing that there is a layer of skin sitting on top of all of those muscles. So you want to make sure that your highlights in those deep valleys all connect together throughout the entire body. I end up taking this highlight all the way around, including some of those shadowed areas. Where it does um, wrap in a shadow, I do dilute the color a little bit more so that my overall value of the medium C gray is not as intense as in the highlighted areas. From there, I'll go in with a highlight of pale gray. And really once the medium C gray has been applied over the entire model, a large portion of the work is done and this is all just pure mechanics. So with the pale gray, I'm focusing on the brighter areas of the suit, wherever I am getting more direct highlighting for my light source is where I'm focusing these, uh, these highlights. I'll start introducing scratches and some chips into the suit and then continuing to push this color into those deep valleys where the muscles do intersect and overlap. Finally, I'll finish up with some greenish white. With this color, I really want to exaggerate some of the scaled clusters on the actual suit itself. So what I'm doing here is applying a thin edge highlight over each of the scales. A little bit tedious, but I think the end result is definitely worth it. The scales do pop. And then where these scales end, I will stipple and create a bit of a, a fade to give the illusion that these scales are sort of blending into the, the more mid or dark tone portions of the suit. You do wanna make sure that your paint is nice and diluted for this. This will give you more accurate lines on the edges and it'll help your stippling to create a more natural fade. I do also pick out some of the more prominent scratches on the suit to exaggerate and um, give these details a little bit more attention. With some very dark brown, I'll apply a base coat onto the horns as well as the toenails and fingernails of the suit. My next highlight is with IDF Modern Grey. Rather than just apply a line highlight down the striations, I'm going to use a bit of a stippling dotting motion to add a bit more textural variety to the surface. With Dunkle Gelb Osgab, I'll apply my next highlight, making sure to not do this highlight evenly over all the striations to create a bit more variety in the depth. And then my final highlight is with Warm Gray. I'll focus this on the tips of the horns as well as picking out or adding some scratches and chips, just like with the gray suit. With violet red, base flesh, and beige red, I'm gonna paint the fleshy portions of the palms as well as the soles of the feet. With the violet red diluted to about a watercolor consistency, I'll apply a couple of translucent layers and I'm going to deliberately fudge the edge so it's not as crisp of a division between the different elements. And then while the paint is still wet, I'll wet blend up through base flesh and beige red. I will be using the airbrush later on to help smooth out some of these blends. So my goal here is more to make sure that I'm picking out those various meaty shapes of the palms and especially in the fingers where you have the segments making sure that I have a deep crevice or shadow to help define each of the digits. Paint the skin. I'm gonna start with the base coat of Indian Shadow. And then much like with the palm of the hand, I'll highlight up through base flush and beige red. It's a very similar recipe, but I find that the Indian Shadow gives the skin tone a bit more of an earthier brown, sort of red burgundy color tone. There's not a lot of large surface area to worry about. So I'm not really spending too much time blending because both the um, airbrush glazes afterwards will help to smooth it out. So what I'm really making sure to do is focus on defining the various forms of the face, in particular around the cheeks and the eyes. There's a lot of these little micro folds and wrinkles. I wanna make sure that I'm appropriately capturing, particularly as I work my way up into um, light flush. My final highlight is probably about a 50-50 mix of the two. And as I highlight up, I'm really focusing, you can see, on where the, the sockets are and the cheeks sort of curve out right to the corners of the eye. Getting those crow's feet in there, as well as picking up the wrinkles in the nose. With Tenebus Gray, I'll black line the eyes of both the rhino suit and the rhino face, as well as the mouth.
the white dance. I'm going to paint the whites of the eyeball. And then for the teeth, I'm actually going to mix up a 50-50 mix of white sand and tenebrous gray first. And this will help to fill in the gaps in between the teeth. So that when I highlight them with white sand, as you can see here, the gaps aren't quite as cartoony and you avoid that sort of buck teeth wide space look. With number six, earth yellow and Sahara yellow, I'm going to paint and highlight the eyeball of the rhino suit. Just a simple two-tone highlight, base coat, and highlight just to add a bit more depth. And then I'll go back in with some tenor gray, and I'll paint the pupils in both the rhino suit as well as the eyeball. I'll follow this up with a dot of white sands to add a bit of specular highlight to the eyeball itself. I don't usually do this in smaller models, but for this rhino figure, because the face is a little bit larger, I thought it'd be cool to add that extra little detail and depth. We'll start with some violet red for my first airbrush glazing pass. For all of these airbrush glazes, I'll be doing a bit of a watercolor consistency. So I would say five parts water to one part paint. And the goal here is to nuance and shift the color of the various elements. So starting with the violet red and then the warlord pink, I'm focusing on the fleshy elements, We're looking at the, the knees, the elbows, the palms, the hand, the areas around the face. Anywhere where I want to have a bit of extra rosiness, I very gently glaze these colors in. And then I follow this up with some athermatic blue. And my goal here is to essentially nuance all the mid and shadow tones towards a cooler blue tone and to add a lot more nuance to the suit. I also wanted to have a bit of color separation from the base. My base is a lot of sort of khaki tones, a lot of grays to sort of um, warm ivories. And so I wanted to push the rhino suit particularly into a cooler blue tone. Because the mid and shadow tones are fairly prominent in this figure, I wanted to have that dichotomy between the warm base and the cool suit. And then I finish off with some light livery green. For this, I'm targeting the highlighted areas. Anywhere that's receiving direct light from my light source, I'm doing a very soft glaze. You want to make sure that you're not overdoing this color. It is fairly saturated out of the bottle. Once my first airbrush passes are done, I'll go back in with some greenish white, beige red, and um, light skin. And I'll highlight up some of the areas of the suit. I'll mix in various flesh tones for areas like the, the knuckles and areas around the face. And then as I get more towards that gray or grayish blue area, I'll use more greenish white just to polish up my highlights and correct any overspray. And then I'll wrap up with a glaze of Drucci Violet from Games Workshop. In order to not overpower the blue tone, I'm pretty much focusing this on the deepest shadows. So I'm looking at areas directly at the very bottom of the feet and the legs, behind the knees, under the butt, in the deepest part of the armpits and the elbows. And that completes our painting of the Rhino. If you want to find out how I painted the base, I'll have a link in the video description below that has a full length tutorial on the colors and techniques I used, as well as where you can download the newspapers and posters I used for this base. I'll also have links to my other social media platforms, including my Patreon, if you want to see more full length in depth tutorials of other figures I've painted in the past. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more awesome weekly content. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.